Subscribe, YouTubers. Welcome to the show. We're going to talk a lot of trade today. Buy low, sell high, all that great stuff. If you want the best content every single day, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We're getting started right now. Welcome to Fantasy Football Today. Worried about any first or second round picks or are they all buy lows? We got plenty of questions about Ezekiel Elliott, so we'll give plenty of answers. In fact, guys, I have uncovered the secret behind why Tony Pollard has been better than Ezekiel Elliott. I did an intense Film review this morning. I'm going to just blow your mind with my football smarts. Get ready for that. I want to I, I want to make a trade on the air today, too. I think, you know, we're in enough leagues together. I, I want to trade with Schrager. Uh, I, I was going to make him a trade offer last night, but I said, let's do it on the air. So you guys ready to have some fun. You better make some trades today. I'm ready to trade every day. Yeah. All okay, right, good. <laughs> I bring my lunch to work every day. I'm like... Who wants this healthy, you know, turkey deli meat, nothing added, no salt added, no bread, no nothing for, you know, a slice of pizza or for a cheeseburger? Yeah. And no one's ready to trade with me then, but I'm ready to trade. Listen, quick, quick word of advice. Uh, deli meat, not healthy, no matter what. Look, this is uh, Ben's <laughs> roster at, today. and my roster. I want to trade Tom Brady for Jalen Hurts. Ben, what else will you give me in addition to Hurts for Tom Brady? Adam, I like Jalen Hurts just as much as Tom Brady for the rest of the year. Here. Get this guy off the Perfect. show. Perfect answer. <laughs> Sorry Perfect about it. answer. You can't. That Let's see. Answer. Who could you add to Brady for Jalen Hurts? Hmm. <laughs> Broncos DST. Oh, yeah. I'm good. I, I like Hurts just as much. All right. All right. I guess I'm not making that trade. Anyway, guys, I want to get your thoughts, your your uh, your trade thoughts. And we've got the Fantasy Cops coming on in a little bit as well. Uh, somebody's calling out Heath for being a uh, a terrible fantasy player, tanking in his dynasty oh, league. Oh, I need to check that league. I think I accidentally won this week. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for your win. Uh, I also got an email last week, a, a possibly brilliant trade strategy. And tell me what you think about this. You look at your players on your team and their bye weeks. You trade those players to fantasy managers who you are playing on those bye weeks. So you never have to face them. And obviously mm. you'd have to get equal trade value back, but you weaken your opponents going forward by playing the bye week game. I've never thought about that, and I think it's terrific. It is terrific. That is absolutely something you could start doing. It sounds like a little bit more work, though, because first you've got to go to the schedule in your league to see, okay, who do I play in week 11? And then you've got to hope that the stars align with that team in week 11. What, my favorite strategy is to trade with teams who are 0-2, or sometimes 0-3 if they're still paying attention, for players that we don't think are going to be good week three or week four because they know they have to get a win mm -hmm. and just try right. to get some future value. So that's why I was just uh, I'm kind of going through our leagues and looking for leagues where you guys are 0-2, and, and I'm going to make you some offers on the air. Won't be Michael, fine. Michael Thomas is the perfect guy to target. Like if the Michael Thomas manager is 0-2, that's that's an easy guy to go after because they got to win now, and Michael Thomas isn't going to help them win now. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about uh, Mike Evans this week. I, I don't think they're mm. using Jalen Ramsey the same way, but if they do decide to use Jalen Ramsey to shadow Mike Evans, like that, that's the problem with Evans. When he faces Marshawn Lattimore, when he faces tough cornerbacks, he tends to have pretty bad games. So Von Diggs in week one. Right, exactly. So, you know, I'm I'm a little bit worried about him against the, the Rams, but then again, I just don't know how the Rams are gonna play it. So that could be somebody that that you go after. I don't I don't know if people would share the same feelings that no, I, I think the Rams last week did not give the quote unquote star treatment to Michael Pittman until Pittman had a good like good numbers against them. And then in in the second half toward the end of the game. Ramsey was closer to Pittman. I wouldn't say he was directly on him, man to man. Well, Dave, but, I can tell you in week one, they did not do that with Allen Robinson. No, they did not. Oh. And you know what? Allen Robinson didn't burn them like Pittman did. No. Pittman All just right. got a lot of targets. That's how he put together week one. Well, Heath, how about any names that you could think of, of players that we don't expect to have good weeks that you look for an 0-2 team and say, hey, give me this guy. One guy I was just looking at was Deontay Johnson. 
Um, like he's hurt. He might, eat, might not even play this week. You would want to probably make this trade today because I kind of got the indication they think he's going to play. Deontay Johnson's hurt a lot and then ends up playing or coming back in the game. But uh, Deontay Johnson is someone, I think any of the offensive players on teams that are having these quarterback problems right now that are probably going to be resolved for the next week or two, Jalen Waddell, I think would be a good one. Rookies, rookie wide receivers, Javante Williams, I Javante think would be a good one. Yeah. Um, why, is, why is Javante Williams a great buy low? Because he's still only getting 50% of the carries, and we think that's going to change at some point. Mm-hmm. Do we? I'm, you're talking to someone who I think he'll be over 50%. You've been the Javante Williams guy. What are you talking about? I was about to say, you're talking to someone who obviously was the big Javante Williams guy, but I'm I'm just asking for the sake of the listeners. Why do we think that is going to happen? Maybe maybe I'm wrong about Javante Williams. Um, You might be, but I think you can, tr- you can probably get him for cheaper than what someone drafted him for right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good point. Uh, and also, if you want an edge setting your DFS lineups, the Fantasy Football Today DFS pod brings you all of the DFS insights that you need to dominate DFS. Frank Stanfield, Mike McClure, and Sia Najad provide cash and GPP analysis on Tuesdays and Thursdays, deep diving into pricing and matchups. Listen to the Fantasy Football Today DFS podcast wherever you listen to FFT. All right, are there any first or second round picks you are genuinely worried about? Because we could sit here and say, oh, buy low on Calvin Ridley and buy low on just on AJ Brown or whatever. But are there any first or second round picks that you are not calling a buy low if they're struggling? I'm, I always struggle to remember who the. Um, I'm looking at ADP right now. You want some candidates? Second round picks. Because Clyde Edwards Hilaire was a third round pick, technically, is what we're calling him. Is that right? Tell His me. ADP was 27.9. Okay. So that's a third round pick. But yes, we should be worried about Clyde Edwards Elaire. But he is one that I'm probably like, and this is, happens a lot and will happen many more times probably. He's probably one that I might buy low one because it seems like the perception has fallen from like high end number two running back to not even a number three running back. Well, I'm and worried about what terrible. the chief coaching staff perception is of him. And that I they, understand that, but he's still getting sick. Like he's like seventh right now in percentage of teams rush attempts. Mm-hmm. But he's he looks he might be a trap back because Daryl Williams mm-hmm. got the goal line carry, and he's not super. Ceh isn't super involved in the right. pass game. That's a little inconsistent. Uh, now look, last year he had the most carries on the team inside the five yard line. I think a lot of them came in week one. I, so I, I don't I think he's played eighty percent of the snaps inside the red zone too, as well. Okay, right. So I don't want to just condemn him to not being the goal line guy. I know it happened on one play that Daryl Williams got in there, but that doesn't mean that that'll, that'll continue happening. So, what would you be willing to give up, or how do you value Clyde Edwards either going forward? Very, very similarly to how I valued him in draft season. I think I have him like running back twenty-one in the projections right now, and I had him running back twenty um, coming into the year. I view him like there's a part of it is also that some of the other running backs, like no one's emerged hardly at all, except for Damian Harris. He might be the only guy who's really passed him all that much. Um, I value him very similarly to James Robinson. I value him very similarly to uh, Chase Edmonds. Um, running back. I got <laughs> yeah. I, I got him a little bit higher than that in the trade value chart. He's tied for 17th in non PPR. He's closer to uh, 19th in full PPR, but still a number two fantasy running back. And if you want to trade him off your team, I think that's the value you've got to expect back in trade. And if you're trying to trade for him, you should probably aim a little bit lower than that. Give What would you give up for a good flex player? That's what you should offer for Edwards Elaire. And then if you got to add a little bit to it, then so be it. But Heath said it running back sucks. And so oh, if you're that. that was me. Oh, well, I, I thought somebody smart said it. If <laughs> if you're going to if you're going to try and acquire Clyde Edwards Elaire, you're probably going to need a running back to give back to that manager, unless they've just they're loaded at running back and they really don't need it. But short of that, you're going to need to give a running back and something else. Two guys that can be potential starters for CEH. All right, I ben think you can get Tyson Williams and and some other garbage on your roster. Not that Tyson Williams is garbage, but Tyson Williams plus garbage for Clyde, and pull that off. All right, I'm going to need Schrager's help here. I'm going to do a Twitter poll. And I know I'm going to forget about it, so you got to remind me to check in in ten minutes. Who would you rather have rest of season in PPR, 
Sterling Shepard or CEH? Make sure you do a C results. No. And let's just see what people say. Sterling Shepard or CEH and PPR. Speaking of, C, of Sterling Shepard, I think it'd be really good. Like we we do some dynasty stuff in the offseason. We don't we don't ever do we don't do enough dynasty stuff in season and it is a trade show and dynasty trades are so much fun. What is Sterling Shepard's dynasty trade value for a contender? Like if you were a contender in a 14 team league and you figured you were going to have a pick amongst the last four picks, so like pick 25 through 28 in a dynasty league, uh -huh. rookie draft, would you give up your second round pick? So pick 25 through 28 for Sterling Shepard? Absolutely would give up the second round. I thought you were going to go to first round pick. So you would definitely give up a second round pick. Second round pick for Sterling Shepard. I'm doing that right now. I am sending I'm, you the I'm offer. Trying to win. I'm sending you the offer. Let's do it. Uh, I don't know if I need him though, Heath. No, you just said you would definitely do it. We just agreed to a trade. In a vacuum, I would do it, but you need to look at my team. Yeah, come Good on. Receivers. What do I need Sterling Shepard for? What do you mean? He's probably been better than every receiver on your team. Yes, but my team has, <laughs> like, statistically to this point, he probably, well, I don't know if he's been better than uh, DeAndre Hopkins. No. I've got McLaurin. He's probably been better than McLaurin because McLaurin. You have Tyler Higby in one of your flex spots right now. Tyler Higby is the man. All right. Um, I might do it. I might, I still might do it. I've got to, all right. So just to have it out there so the listeners know. I've got DeAndre Hopkins, Terry McLaurin, Antonio Brown. Those are my three receivers. In my flex spots right now are C.D. Lamb He's and Tyler Higbee. Do I really need Sterling Shepard on top of all that? I don't know. I don't. The think offer so. is in your box. My receivers on the bench are Mooney, Tyler Boyd, and Paris Campbell. I'm rejecting the deal. Sterling. If Shepard. I needed a receiver, I would do it. Besides, I'm one and one like you, Heath. Maybe I'll start tanking like Heath did. You need to you need to win this week. I know I'm playing an undefeated. Sterling Shepard would be your number like your number three receiver this week. He would not be my number three receiver this week. All I'd right, guys. All right, let's so, get back. You get you guys. That didn't that's work. a good trade. No, that uh, hey, it might. You could. I feel like you could. Get I'm telling you that if my receivers were weak, that would have worked in a heartbeat. I would have taken it in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. All right, great. So let me talk an about effort for that, Heath. Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, I've, I told you I uncovered the secret. What position does Zach Martin play? Right guard or left guard? I'll give you a hint. It's deodorant. He, He's Old Spice? He's the right guard. Tony oh. Pollard. Yeah. Tony Pollard had 13 carries in week two. 11 of them went to the right side. Uh -huh. Ezekiel Elliott had... 16 carries in week two. Three of them went to the right side. Why don't you run behind the all-pro right guard? He, it, okay, Tony Pollard did it. Very smart. Ezekiel Elliott did not. That will solve all the problems. You're welcome. In all seriousness. I, I, don't, I don't know what actionable fantasy information that gave us. Well, then let's just get to actionable fantasy information. I mean, we, we can email Kellen Moore and let him know, but I think he's already got it pretty good idea but it's interesting that they're gonna they're gonna totally set up pollard behind the right side and not zeke it's not necessarily a zeke thing that he's running to the left listen he listen, be, listen. Dave, I, was just, I was just having fun we don't have to we don't have to break that down let's just break I down how we it. feel about ezekiel elliott right now and you know if you were drafting again today is he a first round pick are you worried that tony pollard is going to overtake him because people are really worried about this that pollard's going to continue to have a big role um, and at the expense of Zeke, who had 16 carries last week, everybody. But you know, what what should we be looking for for Zeke right now, or should we be trying to trade trade him away or trade for him? Like, what do you think? I wouldn't trade him away because it feels like you're you're selling low. But I don't have a great deal of confidence that Zeke is going to be worthy of the top six pick that we took him with. Um, if anything, I think that last week was less encouraging than week one. Week one, I at least had the excuse of the well, Tampa Bay run defense is like you should just pass against them all the time. Last week, they weren't run heavy. I think they ran more than had more rush attempts than pass attempts. And he had to share half of them with Pollard. Um, I would offer. Man, it's just like what running back has been 
maybe Bobby you could Haskins trade a number two wide receiver uh, and right. Damian Harris. I don't know why. He, uh, yeah, why and Damian Harris? I, I don't know. Uh, why could you trade? And would you trade Cooper Cup or Tyler Lockett for Ezekiel Elliott? The trade chart says that that's a good deal for you to get Zeke. I I feel like we're, we've been scared of Zeke now for each of two weeks, and it's I, I'm just not sure if I'm going to believe that Tony Pollard is going to keep this up. We've never seen this before from the Cowboys, where Pollard's had that much work and that much success in the same game as Ezekiel Elliott. There's there were two games last year where Pollard had ten touches, ten carries. And Zeke was playing. And the very next week, he was below 10. One time, he was below 10 the very next week. And the other time, Zeke was out. And Pollard was the starter. And Pollard had a good game. He had two touchdowns. So I, I'm not ready to say that it's for sure going to happen, that Pollard's going to overtake him. He did look better than Zeke, if you ask me. But yes, there are some questionable things going on with Zeke. But that's just the beginning of the worries for Cowboys fantasy. Yeah, if, if they're able to run the ball with both of these guys, and they realize now they've got a run game, that's fewer pass attempts for Dak Prescott. That's their dream right now is to take work off of Prescott's plate so he's not throwing 50 times a game. And I just and want to say that's bad. That's Cooper and Lennon. That's, that's, a, that's bad. Like yeah. the fact that they won good. last week is bad for them for the rest of the season because it encouraged them to do that. They scored 20 points against the Chargers. That is yeah. not a good offensive plan. All right. Well, Let's for fans. So we can uh, get to a lot of names. Are you worried about Jonathan Taylor, or do you still value him the same way? Uh, I value him almost the same way. He's just he's had so many high value opportunities that it's tough to ignore. Just the results haven't been there, and I would imagine that they will eventually be there. So he's a perfect buy low running back right now. Saquon Barkley. It feels like everybody's saying um, that Saquon's about ready to break out. So I don't know that you can buy low on him. I expect, like, I would, I would rather have him than Clyde. I, I think I'd still rather have Gibson. I'm not one. I'd rather have Mixon. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'd rather have Barkley than Swift. So I guess he's not a buy low for me. I'd rather have Barkley than Swift. Allen Robinson and the Raiders running backs for Saquon Barkley. Absolutely not. I'd rather have Saquon. <laughs> Stragger just proposed that to me <laughs> uh, for my Saquon Barkley. He was going to give me Allen Robinson. You're trying to get Saquon Barkley from the Eagles fan on the podcast. Good luck. <laughs> Eagles fan. That's what I'm saying. So uh, yeah, everybody, I, I know some people who are really close with the Giants and they've got Saquon Barkley on their fantasy teams and they're expecting him to break out in week three. And I think everybody is. I, I don't think we're hearing anything. At least I hope we don't hear anything this week about how the Giants are still going to try and limit his work, but he has progressed through the first couple of games. There have been very small flashes of him looking like his old self. This is a terrible Atlanta defense. I would be really disappointed if Saquon does not come through with a heavy workload and maybe three or four big plays and a touchdown this week. Those are the three things I'm looking for. That's a lot of things right there. Three or four big plays in one game. Well, if he gets two or th two of those things, then I'll be happy. Right. If he gets one or fewer of those things, I'm going to be concerned. It's kind of like, I mean, I feel like it's kind of like Najee Harris last week. Oh, he better have a big game against the Raiders or we're going to be concerned. And he, I know he had a receiving touchdown, but yeah, right. he didn't have that big of a game. I think, I think you got to be a little concerned just because the offense looks bad and the offensive line stinks. Yep. People have this image of the Giants in their head from Thursday night where they played really well. They had a very good offensive game, but they always do against Washington and they better keep this up because if they, if their offense sucks, like we think it's going to, I, I just, I'm, I don't know what what to expect from Barkley. It's obviously a big wild card. I'm going to tell you guys, last night I created quite a stir on our live stream. I said, and you're going to kill me for it, I get it. I would not trade Tom Brady straight up for Saquon Barkley. And, I, and I'd stand by that. I wouldn't do so it. So you I, were just saying you wanted to trade Tom Brady to Schrager. Yeah. Do you... You're not going to be able to trade Tom Brady if that's what you're if you're if you wouldn't give him up for Barkley. If you've got to aim higher than Barkley. No, so here's the thing. I think in fantasy football last year, this year, you pretty you don't need it. Okay. There are obviously exceptions, but I think you more or less need an elite quarterback to have an elite team. I don't think you can play the streaming game. I think the elite quarterbacks are just too good now. 
So I can't leave myself without one really at any cost, unless it's, you know, a, a top 10 overall player or something like that. So, I, you know, I'm trying to trade Tom Brady to get Jalen Hurts and something else. That's one thing. But it, I, the the comparison I would make is if after week two last year, I said, hey, would you trade Aaron Rodgers for Josh Jacobs or Miles Sanders? Knowing this, knowing us, I'm sure we all would have said, hell yeah, I'd take that running back that I was drafting in the top 15 or whatever. Yep, we sure would have. Yeah, right? But the the highest outcome for Barkley is probably better than Brady, but the lowest is much, much lower. And I just don't think that you should have a bad quarterback or a streaming quarterback on your team. I think you got to, if you're going to trade a quarterback, you got to make sure you have, you know, a top 10 guy and you're not playing the, the streaming game all year. So, that, that's my so- when you say a top ten guy, does that that does not count Stafford? I, you know, I think it does because I looked at God, their schedule today. It's not that it's, it, they got a bunch of easy defenses, but I think they got some high scoring games. You know, Seattle, Arizona. I think it right. sets up pretty well. I, I'd be okay with that. He's probably the low end of that. So Tannehill's out. What about Cousins? Tannehill's out for me. Cousins, no. I mean, I know Cousins going to be good, but I don't know that he's going to be fantasy championship good. So like if Cousins and Barkley, sure, I'd do that, but. Uh, and I think you've got to have, I think they're probably about 10 quarterbacks in my opinion. The problem is that I think even the most diehard Tom Brady fan would give up Brady for Saquon in his fantasy league, just to have the chance of having that stud running back on his roster. It's different in two quarterback league. I actually think that you're not far off in that type of format, but in a one quarterback league, I think I'd be willing to give up literally any quarterback that I had to get Saquon Barkley and then play the streaming game and hope that I find success with it, which has been proven to be, if you're good at streaming quarterbacks, a workable strategy over the balance of the fantasy season. Plus, you could always trade Brady. If if you just fell into Brady for Barkley and now you've got Barkley and you're streaming quarterback, you probably can make another trade to get a decent quarterback to recoup that yeah, if, if not this week, then in within the next two or three weeks. So I, I think it's bad strategy to commit to a great quarterback. If it's going to cost you a great running back is Saquon Barkley, a great That's running. Back. Yeah. That's what I hope we answer on Sunday. Well, if we answer it on Sunday, I'm not sure that we're, you know, it's because he does it against Atlanta. I'm not sure that he's going to do it every game. Right. I mean, sure. But what, I would be encouraged by, I'm sorry, Adam, I would be encouraged by a, a heavy workload in the game i would be encouraged if he gets a bunch of goal line opportunities hopefully he scores on one of them he had that nice big run against washington what if he has one or two nice run two or what i say two three or four nice runs against atlanta yeah that's what i'm looking for he gets two of those things i'm i'm ready to say okay saquon's good to go i i hope so all right so i've taken too much time here let tell me guys just some players that you're looking to buy low well actually before we do that uh, Stefan Diggs, Calvin Ridley, AJ Brown, Justin Jefferson, um, DK Metcalf, who's off to a bit of a slow start. Are they all what we thought they were? Are they all still second round caliber players? Second to third round caliber players, sure. Because I think Lockett and Cup, if we were redrafting today, I think the, seeing what we've seen from them for the first two games, they'd make the top 35, top 30. I think we'd take Lockett ahead of DK at this point. I think we'd take Cup ahead of DK. Yeah, I mean Lockett's got two touchdown catches of sixty plus yards. So no, I don't well, think it's sustainable. But Lockett I think also he's has good. more fantasy points since the start of twenty nineteen than all but four wide receivers. Yeah, he's been, he's been all. That's the thing. I think it's very important with both Cup and Lockett. Just because they were underdrafted, and I think we were saying they were underdrafted. Don't trade them for low end number one wide receiver value. They are low end number one wide receivers. They've been low end wide receivers for most of the past three seasons. If you're going to trade Cooper Cup or Tyler Lockett and sell high on them, you need to get top five wide receiver value or you're not selling high. They're both in the top 12 among receivers, non PPR or full PPR on the trade chart. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Dave and Jamie are going to give you a bunch of names that you can... Dave and Heath are going to give you a bunch of Just names. Bring Jamie you, on. Wow. Sorry. 
Well, you he can, doesn't even know who's on the podcast. All right, that you can. Uh, all the brain. First, you're saying you're gonna. First, you're trying to get Jalen Hurts for Tom Brady. Now you're saying that you'll trade Saquon Barkley for Tom Brady straight up, and now you're calling Heath Jamie. No, I called Heath Dave. I called you Jamie, just to clarify. Oh my uh, God. We'll be right back on fantasy football today. <laughs> Look at what he did on his video. Welcome back, everybody. Buy high, sell low with Chris and and uh, Jacob Gibbs here today. All right, guys. Uh, Heath, why don't you kick us off? Who are you buying low on? Uh, I mentioned Clyde. If if the perception is low enough, I think as desperate as I am for running backs and full PPR, I might try to buy low on guys like Mike Davis, Miles Gaskin that are getting a lot of targets at least. Those running backs that are struggling but at least being used in the passing game, I feel a little bit better in full PPR about what their possibility might be. I would definitely send a buy low offer for Stefan Diggs, AJ Brown, any of those guys. Um, okay. Yeah. Josh Allen, I assume everybody's cool with him. Is just off to a slow start. Yes. I just, again, the I'd say the opposite of what I said about Lockett and Cup about Josh Allen. We should not have expected him to be as good as he was last year. Don't pay for him like he's going to be as good as he was last year. That was not a fair expectation. And and we said that he shouldn't be valued so much differently than the other non-Mahomes, you know, top five guys. Would Kyler's you guys. trade Kyler for Josh Allen? No. No. I think I I, you- I, don't, I never made the decision, but I, I'm pretty sure I would have taken Kyler over Allen. Would you trade Tom Brady for Josh Allen? Yes. I've got them tied on the trade chart. Allen's top six. He's basically sixth. Uh, Dave, who are your bylaws? Justin Herbert leads the way for me. Herbert, and this is, I don't know if you follow me on Twitter or not, at Dave Richard, but I, I teased that I had a mind-blowing Herbert stat on uh, the FFT show on Tuesday. This is what it was. The Chargers have had six drops and six penalties that have called back big plays on offense. If all six of those drops never happen, and if all those penalties never happen, and we could do this for every quarterback, but we're just doing it for Herbert right now, he would have four more touchdowns and 175 more yards. And the four touchdowns that he had called back, those drives ended with non-touchdowns, field goals or turnover. So it's not like he he missed. It's not like Mike Williams dropped a touchdown against Washington and then Herbert scored a touchdown anyway. Right. It didn't happen. So he really has been playing well. The protection has been great. He's just been let down a little bit. And the the most egregious drops have been by Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. It's the craziest thing. So hopefully those guys get their act together. Allen especially. You never expect to see drops from him. And uh, I I think Herbert is the perfect guy. If you're 0-2 and you've got Brady, and you can turn Brady into Saquon Barkley or something more realistic, like another player to help your team, and you can buy low on Herbert, you're making two trades here. Uh, or maybe it's one trade. Maybe it's Herbert and something else for yeah. Brady. Definitely do it. Definitely do it. Great numbers coming for Justin Herbert. I do not expect him to be plagued by drops and offensive penalties all year <laughs> long. Hey, Schrager, that's mean what you did to Heath there. That is mean. Uh, it's definitely my fault. Yeah, <laughs> my fault there. <laughs> Thank you for covering for me. i you remembered Ben's name. Uh, I didn't. I, that's why I called him Schrager. Uh, any other by lows, David, you want to get to? And I, I have a follow up question. Uh, if you I mean, at quarterback or at any uh, position? No, any, just, you know, your favorites. I agree with Heath on Gaskin. Uh, I think that he's somebody that the Dolphins have to give the football to just a little bit more. And they've done a good job giving it to him in the passing game. It wouldn't surprise me if along the line here we saw like a seven catch game from Miles Gaskin along the way. I think he's actually somebody that's a great by low. I think Javante Williams is a good buy low. I, I don't know if I feel good about saying James Robinson is a good buy low because he's just still not getting the work, but he's looked okay. Like Jacksonville's eventually going to realize that they've got to lean on him even more than they have. This isn't a terrible matchup for him this week against Arizona. Uh, Robert Woods is a tremendous buy low. There are definitely going to be fantasy managers that are frustrated with him. Uh, Allen Robinson's another one. Robinson should have had a couple of touchdowns. Last week against Cincinnati, he dropped at least one. There's another one that looks a little sketchy that maybe he dropped, maybe he didn't drop. Um, but again, another receiver that I don't expect drops from. I wonder if you could turn Cortland Sutton and a bench player into Allen Robinson on your squad. 
and uh, Kittle and Mark Andrews. Oh yeah, tight end. That, that was my this, follow-up question. This is your best. If you believe in them, this is your best chance. If you didn't draft a top five tight end, this is your to best go get him to get one, right? Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you lucked into Gronk, because I think you can make the case that Gronk has more value than Mark Andrews right now, and has close to, if not the exact same value as George Kittle. What is Mark Andrews' target share? I don't know if anybody has that handy. I could look. I could do the math for you if you want. Because it's probably seventeen percent, little... and that's is that a guess or is that official? I believe that's a guess, but it He's might got, be official. Uh, no, he has ten targets on fifty-six pass attempts. Sounds a lot like seventeen percent. So what's divided by fifty-six is set. It's seventeen point eight percent. Yeah, yeah, you undersold him there. Oh, that's not good for him, right? I mean, he's usually higher. No, than what, what's happened through two weeks, and like that's why I said I'm basically giving him one more week. If it continues for a third week, then I'm a little bit actually real panicking. Uh, Sammy Watkins, I thought it was a joke that Sammy Watkins would take targets from Mark Andrews. Sammy Watkins has not only taken targets from Mark Andrews, he's been very good with those targets. Um, yeah, 15 for him. Yeah, right. not great. Second on the team. The, and, I, and I bet you're surprised by the amount of targets that Marquise Brown's had. Eight per game. Um, so he's at around 30%. 16 out of... So so let me ask you this. So just looking at a uh, stats page. They've thrown 56 passes, but they count 54 targets. So do they not count throwaways or something like that? But, well, a throwaway is not a target. Right. So is that what it is? So should we be using 54? Instead of I use 56, 56, but I've seen people use both. So Marquise Brown's got a 28.6% target share. I think I had him projected for 25%. Um, so it's not a huge increase over what he's had, but enough. I love Marquise Brown. He's he's a sell high guy for sure. Maybe you think you want to wait a week though, Detroit? You could, but if, if you're getting a good offer for him now, if you if you can package him to get Robert Woods, I think you got to do it. Yeah, look at the schedule for the Rams. Now, look, it's a yeah. little bit early to know I'm who's going new go. going into the year. Go go for it, Adam. Yeah, no, it's a little bit early to know. Maybe maybe these teams are better against wide receivers, but I just I foresee a lot of passing, especially if Daryl Henderson's out. Tampa Bay, Arizona, at Seattle. Those are the next three games. Could be a lot of points at the Giants. Their secondary is struggling. Maybe it'll be better by then. Detroit at Houston, Tennessee. Holy cow. I mean, we've got a great stretch of games coming up for the Rams passing game, at least on paper. Oh, look at the ceiling in here, Heath, in the podcast studio, the FFT studio. Just a lot of stuff on the ceiling. Um, I, this was one of the selling points for the Rams was that the uh, <laughs> that their schedule was a little challenging to begin the year, and then once you got to week four or five, phew, to the ceiling. All right. So we'll do some sell highs now. And let's get a, take a look at that Twitter poll, Schrager. Sterling Shepard versus CEH in PPR. Let's see what the results are. Dun, 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 dun. 188 votes so far. 53%. Clyde Edwards Elair, 47%. Sterling Shepard. Well, that's Close. and that like maybe people say that. But I have offered Sterling Shepard to literally every person in my dynasty league for a second round rookie pick and no takers. Well, people don't got, actually want to give up anything for Sterling Shepard. But he's got more value in a redraft league than a dynasty league. I would say. He's a free agent, I believe, right? Coming up. Yeah, um, I mean, it's going to be a hard they, time finding a, a situation as good as the Giants offense with Daniel Jones as quarterback. Well, that's why he's a sell high to me. I just don't, you know, it is, look, going back to last year, it's four straight games with nine or more targets. And he's been awesome. But I don't know who's really buying this. Nobody. I, Nobody I don't know. <laughs> I think people are buying it. Nobody's buying it. Nobody in your analysts' uh, dynasty league is buying oh, it. This is not like the, re the the reason I have to tank so hard in this league is because it's like half the teams are awful. Uh, okay. Somebody, yeah. I just made your trade offer for him. Heath. I'm sure it's fantastic, Dave. I can't wait. Oh yeah, you won't like it, but this is an example of me trying to take advantage of your tough situation. All right, guys, we have five minutes for sell highs. Heath, who are we selling high on? <laughs> Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. Uh, well, he has a 30% touchdown rate. 
He okay. has, I believe, the greatest touchdown rate of all time, and it's about a third of what his touchdown rate this season is. <laughs> so I do not think that Rob Gronkowski is going to keep this up. Um, if Daryl Henderson is able to play this week, if he gets in a full practice and they say he's a go, I'd be probably trying to sell Daryl Henderson. Um, so I guess how many broken tackles Daryl Daryl Henderson has this year? Zero. Zero. Yeah. And it's a good situation, but I just don't. Uh, Tyson Williams, I I would be willing to sell him. Um, Let's get some context on it, though. Uh, what you know? What would you sell Tyson Williams for? Would you give him up for Clyde Edwards Elair? I think packaging him for one of those running backs who were drafted in the first three or four rounds but haven't been very good. I would rather have Miles Gaskin and Mike Davis in PPR than Tyson Williams. Would you? You you would obviously then package him to get Miles Sanders, as an example. Yes. Okay. I I I want to push back on that a little bit because I've been kind of encouraged by Tyson Williams and he to me is clearly the best running back on the Ravens and he's not a total dud in PPR either. Give you know I, what do you have? Three catches and two catches in, in two yeah. games. Uh I hope he doesn't make so many mistakes that they have to sit him but I think he's their best running back. I think he's going to be their lead running back and I think he's going to score some touchdowns along the way. He almost had a touchdown. He fumbled it at the goal line. Right, but that's an example so, of the mistakes that he's making. Right. I just I'm not so sure I'm willing to give him up because the running backs you mentioned, they have so many question marks. You know, Miles Miles Gaskin and I wouldn't give him up. I I I don't even think I'd trade Tyson Williams for James Robinson, for example. You're you know, you're a, more and that's on the future. chart. Yeah. If I had Tyson Williams, you would be someone that I would be trying to trade him to. And I don't necessarily think you're wrong. Yeah, I just like the fact that he fumbled on the goal line it does not make me think he's more likely to get more carries on the goal line. Well, he didn't exactly. fumble. It wasn't a goal line carry, but he fumbled oh, on the goal. Line. He fumbled. Yeah, but then he's that was on the, their first drive of the game or their second drive after the pick six. And he still led the team in carries. And it's not like they went away from him. Like, I just I think Latavius Murray might just be kind of a scrub. Uh, Devontae Freeman's not going to take him off the field. So if they want some, well, I think guys are going scrubs are going to take him off the field. I don't think they're. Like he got 13 carries. I think that's probably about what you should expect. Yeah, I guess take him off the field anymore than I any than already. Like he's gonna be their lead running back. That's if how, what I if he had made that run and he was he didn't fumble, but he was down at the two, I would bet you a candy bar and a cheeseburger that Latavius Murray would be in until the drive was over for Baltimore. I, and I would add a six pack of beer. Well, I don't have I don't eat candy bars or drink beer, but I will take the cheeseburger. I would trade Tyson Williams for a cheeseburger. I, I think we should touch on Gronk real quick. Like, what if Gronk is your only tight end? Am I really still selling high on him? Or, like, I, I, I just lucked into a tight end with either with a... Some people might have taken him in the middle rounds. Definitely some people picked him up off the waiver wire. Like, Gron Gronk is helping me win games right now. If I'm selling high on him... What what what's my plan at tight end? Well, the first choice is try to hope the Mark Andrews manager is really panicking and try for that. Straight up. The second choice in full PPR is to trade him for Noah Fant, which I think you can do almost universally. Yeah, and you get something with it. You might even get something with it, but I wouldn't require anything with it. I, I think you could I think most people, if you ask right now, who'd rather have Gronk or Fant? I think Gronk runs away with it. I I agree. I think I agree. that's probably not the case in two weeks. Right. The whole idea is you're you're trading a guy who's doing something that's unsustainable for a younger, more athletic tight end who could who may start be may be on the cusp of breaking out based on how the first two weeks of the year have gone. All right, give me more sell highs real quick, guys. Dave. Um, if you've got Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady in your own two, you can downsize from them. We we've talked about that a lot. It's easy just to trade them for a lesser quarterback and another starter for your team. So you're in win now mode, like Keith talked about earlier. I think that makes a lot of sense. Is there a running back to sell high on beyond Daryl Henderson if he's healthy? Uh, Najee would be somebody I would consider because he's looked so bad as a runner. I don't know if it's his fault. I think the offensive line in the scheme is definitely playing into it. And I just I think anytime he has a good game through the air. You should try and take advantage. I'm worried about the Steelers offense for real now. Um, I think that he could be in trouble. Melvin Gordon's another one. Melvin Gordon, who had, a, I guess he had an okay game. 
in week two after having the long touchdown run in week one. There definitely are managers in your league that are really starving at running back. And Melvin Gordon, somebody you can feed them. Uh, hopefully you drafted Gordon as your third or fourth running back. You might be able to turn him into a, a number two wide receiver. You might be able to turn him into Marquise Brown if you wanted to. Brown's a sell high guy as well, but I do think he's got some value rest of season, whereas I think Gordon could uh, could go down a little bit. And speaking of running backs, if you're in a league with desperate managers, would they overpay for James White in a PPR league? Six catches in each of his first two games. Do you think you might be able to turn him into a player that's better than what James White's been over the last two and a half years? Yeah, it's, it's a good call. I mean, he gives you a nice floor, but if you could trade him for a player with upside, it might be worth doing. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know if things, things are going to be different for James White, but let's take a look at J.D. McKissick and Naeem Hines. They both have had a game with zero catches. Or did Hines have one catch last week? I think he had one. He had one or right. zero. Right. Uh, so they both. I know John and Taylor had one. Yeah, I think I think Hines had one touch and no catches. But whatever it is, they both have had one game very involved in the passing game. He had a seventeen yard catch in week two. Okay. And uh, and they both have had one game with zero or one catch. So maybe James White's the most consistent of that group. But five, six catches a week, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> uh, all right, listen, we got a game to preview here, but this is an important question that I need to ask. Which running back can come out of the dead zone? If you were going to give me two or three of these guys from the running back dead zone that would emerge as reliable starters, who would they be? And I'm looking at James Robinson, Josh Jacobs, DeAndre Swift, Miles Sanders, Miles Gaskin, Mike Davis, Kareem Hunt, Daryl Henderson, a Denver running back, Tyson Williams, a 49ers running back, a Buffalo running back, a Patriots running back, a Tampa Bay running back, Michael Carter. It's a lot of names. Is Miles Sanders in the dead zone. Yeah, yeah, I did say him. Clyde Edwards Hilaire in the dead zone. No, I didn't say him. Damian Harris. Yes, Patriots running backs. Are they your favorite? I mean, DeAndre Swift, is he number one in the dead zone? Chase yeah, Edmonds has been good in PPR got to be swift swift sw yeah swift just shouldn't have been in the dead zone in the first place i agree he he shouldn't be in there but he was yeah well he did just have a pretty crappy game but even still was 12 11 or 12 fantasy points um in ppr for me for me the answer would be the guys who are getting targets so, so you yeah, Mike davis. davis robinson's getting targets would you include him i i'm warming to Robinson. It feels like Urban Meyer learned the Carlos Hyde lesson quicker than I thought he might. <laughs> right. And so I, I think there's a chance we see a, a few more touches for Robinson moving forward. Okay. How do you feel about Chase Edmonds, who's had a nice dose of targets? I I I like Chase Edmonds in that same range. I feel like everybody else likes Chase Edmonds more than I do. I don't he's know if that's currently not true. He's currently Chase Evans is currently RB twenty four in non PPR and RB eighteen in full PPR, and that feels right to me, <laughs> it, because just because the touchdowns could be such an issue, but maybe he's in like a Javante Williams situation where he's just going to overtake the veteran. Well, and I would it's it, you could I don't think that's the case, um, but you you could make the argument that. Both Chase Edmonds isn't actually this good that he's been so far, and Chase Edmonds is better than this. The argument that he's better than this would be, man, he's RB 18 and 24, and he hasn't scored a touchdown yet. Exactly. The argument for would be, man, he's RB 18 and 24, and he's averaging a yard more per carry than he ever has, and he's caught every single one of his targets so far. Hmm. Um, yeah. So I think he probably just kind of is what he's been. Right. Uh, what about Elijah Mitchell? I mean, he's got an opportunity in, in front of him, perhaps with hasty on IR and is don't he healthy? He went back in the game. And so they seemed optimistic about him. They said it was a stinger. Probably let's assume he plays this week. He's got green Bay, Seattle and Arizona in his next three games. And there, there might actually be some tough run defenses, but, uh, it's, a chance. For but what an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think the Packers run defense is very good. Uh, I, think, I don't I think know. they can be okay. It's not the Eagles. Look, I thought they looked pretty gross. Uh, the Eagles, for sure. You were right about that one. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know, but I'm saying at least for the next three weeks before the bye, you might have something with Mitchell, and they may, maybe Sermon ends up coming out of the dead zone. How about this? How about this? There could be some disenchanted fantasy managers that blew their fab budget or their top waiver claim on Mitchell only to get what they got in week two. Maybe they're impatient and they are willing to move on from him knowing that the schedule coming up plus the fact that they're running out of running backs in, in San Francisco that they're going to trust to take 30%, 40% of the workload away from Mitchell. He's in a pretty good spot. If this were Mostert and everyone else on the 49ers were hurt, what would we be saying? We would be saying that Raheem Mostert is a must-start, can't-miss, 20-touch fantasy running back. I have a trade offer. All right, let's do this. I have been offered Devontae Booker, Samaj P. Ryan, and a round two 2022 pick for Sterling Shepard, Mark Ingram, and a round four 2022 pick. I mean, look, if you're tanking, then you take it. So does that mean you don't like my offer? Dave offered me a third and a sixth. No, no I offered, offered me a third, third. for Sterling Shepard and a sixth. Right. You're out, Dave. Okay. <laughs> I'll just take it back. Yeah, because there's a chance that either Booker or P. Ryan could turn into someone that is getting 15 touches a game this season. And then all of a sudden, I'm getting a third round pick for them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sure. And you're still getting the second round pick that you want. You're losing the fourth. You could try countering taking the fourth out of it. And then if they say no to that, then okay. Keep the four. You got a deal. Hey, Dave, you ready to do Thursday night football? I am. All right. Carolina at Houston Thursday night. Na, 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 na. This is an easy game here. Start McCaffrey. Uh, what's your interest level in Sam Darnold? Must start in two QB leagues. Not very interested in one QB leagues. I feel bad for Sam Darnold because in a normal week, I feel like he could be the top streamer of the week in this situation. But Daniel Jones is playing the Falcons and Derek Carr has turned into a starting quarterback and Justin Fields is making his first start. And so we just don't talk about Sam Darnold at all. Yeah, you know, I uh, I feel that way about all of them because I'm just curious to see the start percentages for these guys. There are no bye weeks, and a lot of people a lot of people have a great quarterback. So I don't know how many people are going to start Daniel Jones or Carr or whatever. I just but. I just want to say because I won't be on the podcast tomorrow, um, so it's my only chance to talk about my Daniel Jones projection slash ranking. I forcefully <laughs> moved him down in my rankings to make him eleventh. <laughs> because in my first in my projections and currently nothing's changed in the projections it was the first run at the second run the third run it'd probably be the seventh run daniel jones came out as qb6 for this week <laughs> wow. so who are you starting him over right now you have him 11th who's 12th car 13 uh tana hill 14 cousins all right okay. let's go back to this game here and finish up. 17 who is Aaron Rodgers. You guys are sitting. Is what? 17. Woo. I'll probably move him up a little bit, but I, I don't love it. Should. I don't like it. I got right, listen, listen, Robbie Anderson is uh 37th for Dave and Jamie, 45th for Heath and non PPR, not ranked in full PPR. So we're sitting Robbie Anderson. We just want to we just want to see him perform well. Couple of things. Number one, the target share isn't what it was last year. Darnold is definitely checking it down a little bit more. McCaffrey is a big part of that. DJ Moore's been getting a nice chunk of the target share. And I just see this as a game where the Panthers aren't going to have to throw a lot. So I'm. that's one of the reasons why I'm nervous about Darnold. I think he'll have success when he throws, but I think he'll keep it short. And Robbie is still running plenty of deep routes that you're going to have to hope that Darnold connects with him on like he did in week one. And I don't think you have to take that chance just yet. So he's no better than a than a low end flex. Okay, and you have Dave. You have DJ Moore twenty fifth. Heath has him twelfth, fourteenth uh, in PPR. So I, look, everybody's going to start DJ Moore. I think coming off of mm -hmm. a great game. And why do you hate DJ Moore, Dave? Well, why do you hate DJ Moore? I think there are a lot of receivers this week that have a chance to have a big blow up game, and I'm a little worried that DJ Moore could give us six for eighty, seven for seventy, not quite leave us with a huge, huge game like he did last week. 
any interest in Dan Arnold, who is 3% rostered and the Texans, it's been two games, but they've placed, they faced Jacksonville and Houston and they've been, sorry, Jacksonville and uh, Cleveland and they've been really bad against tight ends. So any interest in Dan Arnold? He's among the touchdown or bus guys. When, can we wait until Dan Arnold scores a touchdown before <laughs> we ask about him again? Like if he scores this week, then we can ask him about him again next week. That's fine. All right, but he had 55 yards last week, so that would make him probably a top 12 court, uh, tight end most weeks. Are you starting any Texans? And really, it's just Brandon Cooks, right, that you might consider? And I'm nervous about Cooks. He had four uncatchable targets last week from Davis Mills, a fifth target that bounced off his arm because he just wasn't on the same page with him. And everything that he did catch from Mills was short stuff. 11 yards or closer to the line of scrimmage for him in that game. It included a touchdown, but he's going to need, and I think there will be targets for him, but he's going to need to break away on a couple of long runs. This Panthers defense has been good through the first two weeks of the season. They're getting pressure on the quarterback. Their top two cornerbacks have been playing very well. I think this is a tough game for Cooks. I, I've got him flex at best this week. Okay. Would you start Elijah Mitchell or Cooks? Haven't reviewed Mitchell yet. I would be tempted to start Mitchell over Cooks and non PPR. Yeah, that's Sunday night against Green Bay, or is it Monday night? No, Sunday night against Green Monday Bay. Night. And um, would you start Robbie Anderson or Brandon Cooks? Cooks. Cooks. I like Marquise Brown and Devontae Smith this week in their matchup. Smith has the Cowboys, Brown has the Lions. Would you start both of them over Brandon Cooks? Pretty sure I would. Um. Uh, yeah. Okay. Antonio Brown or Brandon Cooks? Brown. I think I have Cooks higher, but I'll probably just move Brown ahead of him. And Carolina's DST is number two for Dave and Jamie, and twelfth for Heath. Wow, lower than Daniel Jones in their respective. I, I would rather start Daniel Jones than the Carolina defense. Yes. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, you can start in their 62% rostered as of right now. Well, let's uh, let's call the fantasy cops. All right. This is from Billy from a city whose NFL team should definitely start tanking. Billy says, get that music back up. Hey, Orioles, Nationals, Pirates, and Cubs. I guess those are tanking teams. After hearing Heath's disgraceful tactics, tactics in his dynasty league, and you've heard more of them today, by the way. I had to reach out because I have the solution. In my dynasty league, the draft order is determined by inverse possible points. Uh, base, possible points four. Basically, the computer does best ball for everyone and ranks them based on that, not actual points you scored or, or your record. This means that in order to tank, you must sell everyone and can't just bench people and lose on purpose. I, I care less about that than this. Hopefully you can pass this along on the show so no one has to deal with gutless weenies like Heath in their leagues ever again. Uh, <laughs> See, I think I'd still be okay because my bench, most of the guys on my bench score zero every single week. So I think even if we were doing that, everyone else's bench is outscoring mine by enough that I would still be Patrick Mahomes on your bench. Well, that's the one guy. But <laughs> also... Oh, okay. Also, Joshua Kelly and Pharaoh Brown and Josh Reynolds and Josh Gordon and Carry on Johnson, and DJ Dallas, Wayne Gallman. All right, you're good. You, you suck in, in all leagues. This is from uh, from Steven. 12-team redraft PPR league. It's a one-quarterback league. One guy in the league drafted Russell Wilson, Josh Allen, and three other starting quarterbacks. This has caused a number of teams to have no opportunity to draft a QB1. I personally was left with Burrow as the best option remaining as I was targeting Hertz, who was auto-picked in front of me. Now, this manager is asking insane amounts back for a trade. For example, he wants to give up Josh Allen for Mark Andrews and Austin Eckler. Should he be sanctioned for this unscrupulous behavior, or do we ride it out until he starts struggling on bye weeks? It's spoiled the draft process, in my opinion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somebody's somebody's gonna lose on purpose. That was awesome. Um, yeah, I think that he is going to suffer because of this, and it was not a smart move. But no, he shouldn't be sanctioned. Just mock him when he missed the playoffs. Yeah, look, he might be able. This might work out for him if he can actually pull off some of these trades, like trading is it, say, Tom Brady for Saquon Barkley. 
Sure. Is it collusion if the rest of the league agrees to lowball him on his quarterbacks? If the rest yes. of the league agrees to do something, yes, yes. It's collusion. <laughs> what if two owners collude to do something? Is that collusion? All right. Oh, wait. I hit the wrong button there. We're done with the fantasy cops. Thanks a lot for your questions. Sorry, I couldn't get to more. I got to read our Apple podcast questions. This is from Anna Sesti. Give away, grade the trade, give away Damian Harris and Corey Davis. Damian Harris and Corey Davis get Latavius Murray and Chase Claypool. Harris oh, no. and Corey Davis for Latavius and Claypool. D. Uh, it's a bad trade. I would keep Harris and Davis. Hold on. I want to I just look something up real quick here. Damian Harris in full PPR. Uh, no. I mean, the next two weeks could be tough. New Orleans and Tampa Bay, but then Houston, Dallas, Jets, Chargers. Never mind. All right. Back to Apple Podcast. From a very loyal listener in Indiana. All right. 10 team half PPR. I was offered Devontae Adams and David Montgomery for Aaron Jones and Chris Carson. Would you mm. rather have Adams and Montgomery or Aaron Jones and Chris Carson? I is it I'm I'm looking at oh, Chris Godwin. I'm notes. sorry. Not, not, <laughs> I don't think it's Chris Carson. Did I say Carson twice? Yes. Oh crap. Okay. Adams and Montgomery for Aaron Jones and Chris Godwin. I'll take the Jones Godwin side. I'm doing the math on the trade chart right now. It is almost dead even. I think I would take the Jones side. From Aaron Krug. I tried zero RB for the first time. I'm not sure what to do. I have Keenan Allen, DeAndre Hopkins, AJ Brown, DJ Moore, and DK Metcalf. Jeez. Nice. My running backs are terrible. Really? Josh Jacobs, Javante Williams, and some backups. I'm 0-2. Which receiver would you trade? Keenan Allen, DeAndre Hopkins, AJ Brown, DJ Moore, DK Metcalf. Can you? I guess you can't start all of them. One, two, three, four, five. If it's Probably. a three receiver, two flex <laughs> lead, you could. One, two, three, four, five. I would start. I would trade Hopkins. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you can get. Yeah, Moore I think you get the one most for him. High. Or might be a sell high, you said? He's the only one that could be. The rest of them, well, I guess Keenan Allen could be. I, I think that people will try and buy low on Metcalf and A.J. Brown, but they'll fail in that endeavor, so you should be able to still get fair value for them. The one that you, the two that you could sell high on, theoretically, are Moore and Hopkins. One of those two I would move on from, but you're obviously expecting more in trade from Hopkins than Moore. Right, that's the thing. I, I say I'd trade Hopkins. That doesn't mean I like Moore better. It just means I can get more for Hopkins. I can get uh, more fantasy value for Hopkins. Not DJ. I, think, I think you could get more for Hopkins. You probably yeah, get multiple yeah. mores. Yeah. Maybe all uh, From DJ, I'm in a 2QB league. Could I trade Tom Brady, leaving me with Kyler Murray and Daniel Jones, and a depth piece for a top 12 quarterback like Rodgers, Dak, or Josh Allen, and a playable running back or tight end. So well, so you're you're going to try to quote unquote downgrade from Brady, but if you're asking for Dak or Allen, I don't know that people are going to consider that a downgrade. Or Rodgers, I'm not sure if people are going to. I see I him think as, a, it, you know, as a significant downgrade. I think in a lot of non-industry leagues, people would consider Dak a downgrade from Brady for sure. He um, might be actually. He's he's got. 13 rushing yards this year, which is not uncommon in a two game stretch for him. No, uh, but if it continues, it's because uh, he's coming off the injury. So cool. let's keep an eye on that with Dak. FYI, but yeah, I don't know. Like, would you, would you be looking to, to do this? I think it makes sense, right? To get Rogers, Dak, or Brady and a playable running back or tight. I end. would maybe try a little bit lower on quarterback and see if you can get Kittle or Andrews. And a top 15 quarterback. Okay. From not upset, just disappointed. Who would you prefer rest of season PPR? <laughs> Mark Andrews, Chris Carson, Austin Eckler. Oh, I guess this is a trade. Andrews, Carson, and Eckler. Or Ezekiel Elliott, James Robinson, and Waller. Mm, running back. Probably the first three. Yeah, Eckler, I think Carson, so, too. Andrews. Mm, that's such an indictment on James Robinson. 
but okay. Uh, from D boss or, or Ezekiel Elliott. Would you rather have, Waller. I'd rather Carson. have Eckler than Elliott in PPR rest of season. Yeah. But is the gap between what's bigger, the gap between Eckler and Elliott or the gap between Waller and Andrews? It's the gap between Waller and Andrews, but I think there's a pretty big gap between Carson and James Robinson. Right. too. Yeah. From D boss, grade the trade. 14 team PPR. I gave up Rondale Moore. No, no, I got I got DK Metcalf and Rondale Moore. Sorry, I gave up Deontay Johnson and Kenyon Drake. Winner. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Enjoy well, chicken for dinner this evening, sir. <laughs> you are a winner. It's just so annoying that Kenyon Drake split time with Peyton Barber. You know, if you draft yeah. Drake. You know, Jacobs is so injury prone. So, of course, Kenyon Drake's going to be the lead back. But I, no. That is not what I thought you were going to say was annoying. Me? Am I annoying? I thought you were going to say it's so annoying that Deontay Johnson's been better than DK Metcalf. That's been annoying. Has he been better? Uh, yeah. 34 fantasy points to 27. Yeah. DK Metcalf is going to go nuts. <laughs> it's going to happen for sure. Just how about Russell Wilson throws one of those deep balls to Metcalf instead of Tyler Lockett one of these days? I mean, if Tyler, if DK Metcalf could get that open, he would. <laughs> I wonder I'm how many sorry. deep routes he's actually run. Yeah, I'd like to know. His A dot's a little bit down, but it's it's not low. DK Metcalf's going to be fine. I was just teasing at him. Uh, if, if, I'm sorry to the emailers. I didn't get a chance to read your questions today, uh, but I you know did read some, but not as many as I wanted to. <laughs> you read a lot of them before the show. I did. I, no, I, 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 I did. It's fine. Just respond to all of the emails currently in our inbox. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll talk to you next Thursday then. Uh, we will actually talk to you tomorrow on this week's Thursday for starter sit for the AFC home games. NFC home games are on Friday, and we'll uh, get you ready for Thursday night football, of course, with our live stream on YouTube. Our Q and A at two p.m. Eastern Thursday. YouTube.com slash fantasy football. Am I going for? Am I going to keep the streak alive in the Thursday night prop bet on yes. FFT and five two and zero? Oh? Uh, I don't think I'm that good. It's a one game streak. It's oh. a one game streak, but we're keeping it alive. Let's go. All I right. have no we'll idea what the uh, problem is. We'll talk to you tomorrow on Fantasy Football Today. If you want to hear Dave's prop, that'll be on Fantasy Football Today in five on Thursday morning. See ya.